guys welcome back to the channel so we got something a little bit different for you in this video we're actually going to be doing some exterior trim work I haven't shown a lot of that on the channel but I've got these two ceilings here that we're gonna do uh, we got one over there that's gonna be beadboard and then this one here is gonna be WOTG which is Windsor one tongue and groove and there's a big reason why I chose to use Windsor one on this project and that relates to the exterior grade of this project they are protected they've got a 30-year warranty they're primed on both sides they've got a lot of features built into them that make them an exterior grade trim board now if you don't install them the correct way they could fail and that's what I kind of want to go over with you in these next coming videos is the proper way to do an exterior installation when it comes to trim work so let's go ahead and take a look at this ceiling I'm actually pretty excited to share this one with you guys we're gonna have our tongue and groove going from left to right so it's gonna be parallel with the joist I'll talk more about that here in a minute but we're also gonna have a coffered ceiling out here. We're gonna have two beams right here in this direction and then two beams right here in this direction. It's gonna be our first exterior coffered ceiling. So pretty cool. And the way they frame this, it's pretty much ready to go. We just had to do a uh, very minimal blocking to support our coffered ceiling. So we took care of that earlier. So we're pretty much ready to get started on this install. Now, let me say this before we even get into it, moisture, is the number one enemy of exterior trim installs. Moisture at all costs needs to be defeated. So let me talk a little bit about that. We've got our boards right here, but before we even get to these, before we even start installing these, we have to do something first. We have to put a half inch sheathing up here on this ceiling. Now there's several reasons we need to put this half inch sheathing up there. One of the biggest reasons is if you think about up there in that attic space, you can see it's all foamed up there. So that moisture level is gonna be different than the living space down here that I'm in. And the only thing between those two moisture levels is this board. It's not really gonna let this board perform as it should. So we need to kind of seal that off and create a barrier between our finished board and that attic space. And we're gonna do that with half inch sheathing. And another big reason, and this is really why I recommend you just put the half inch sheathing up there no matter what, is because unless these joists are just absolutely perfect, you are gonna see a wave in your finished ceiling. So these boards, you know, they're basically one by sixes. You know, they will contour to whatever shape you install them on. So if you have joists that are uneven, like you have a joist here that's a little bit lower than you have one up here that's a little bit higher, that board will follow that shape and you will see it in a finished surface and the finished ceiling, especially with all this natural light coming in, you're just gonna see this kind of wave. Adding that half inch sheathing up there is gonna eliminate that and it kind of feathers it out so it's not as drastic. Now I know these joists right here aren't perfect. I put a level on them, they're, they're really good, but that would still affect our finished install. Another reason we have to put that half inch sheathing there is we're gonna install these boards parallel with those joists, so we need to have something to shoot into. So we need some meat to shoot into, something to grab onto, and that half inch sheathing is gonna accomplish that for us. So let's talk a little bit about the material right here. You can see we had it covered with the tarp. We dropped this stuff off yesterday. So we covered this up with the tarp. We stacked up some uh, bricks on it to hold the tarp down. And we're, we just wanna make sure we're protecting these boards. Like I said, moisture is our number one enemy here. We've also got a piece of lumber right here elevating these up off the concrete. That way if it did rain or whatever drizzle came in, these boards would not be sitting just straight on the concrete. Also, there's moisture in concrete. So we wanna have these elevated up off the surface and get airflow under here. These things are good to go. And one other thing too, you may not realize, even though these are exterior boards, they actually need to acclimate to the environment. These things came from another state. We're, we just brought them here to Dallas, Texas. The moisture level in that other state is different than it is here. They were on a shipping truck. They were in a lot of transit places where the moisture levels were different. So while you typically think of acclimation as an interior thing for a climate controlled area, it's actually true of exterior boards as well. These things need to kind of get adjusted to this environment that we're about to install them in. So what we're doing right now is he's actually marking 
the joists with a pencil on the brick. The brick's all gonna be washed and painted anyways. And uh, that way we can connect those lines with a chalk line and snap them. So when we go to do our coffered ceiling, we can see everything again and we'll know exactly where we can install that coffered ceiling to. So if you ask a finished carpenter to do sheathing, you better believe he's gonna cut it with the track saw. And then one thing I'm doing too with this stuff, I'm not being exact with it. Um, this is our line right here, we just got a rough line. I can actually go past that a little bit. And I can get my small track and just connect those two lines. So we have now completed the installation of all of our sheathing up there on the ceiling. As you can see, we got the entire ceiling covered and we're ready to move on to our next step in this installation. Now it's not gonna be installing the trim boards quite yet. I know that's the fun part and I wanna get there too. But the next thing we need to do is actually install our vapor barrier between our finished board and our sheathing that we just put up there. That sheathing really, I know I said it was a barrier earlier. It's not really a barrier until you put something on it. So what we're gonna put on it is this right here. This is just typical home wrap. It's an air barrier, water barrier, and we're just gonna install this how you would install home wrap with these little plastic cap nails and tape. So the reason we're doing this, I know some people are gonna say, hey, that's probably overkill. You don't really need to do that. And I understand where you're coming from on that but Windsor actually recommends that you do it this way. They know their product better than I know their product. And the builder here actually wants this done by the book. They want it done according to the manufacturer's recommended installation procedures. So that's what we're gonna do. Could you get away with not using this on a porch lid like this? Probably, I mean, the boards are treated. They're primed on both sides. I've seen guys do that and you'll, you'll probably be fine. But like I said, this is the right way to do it. So we're gonna go ahead and start rolling this stuff out and get it installed. And we're just gonna get a little bit more than we need and then I'll cut it off and I can get up there and nail it off. I got a real small problem that came up. I just want to tell you about it because 
it's gonna look different than what you see now. Very, very minor change, but these kind of things happen. You see that rectangle right there. That rectangle is just too long. That is a rough opening for a heater. And with the coffered ceiling layout, we just spoke to the architect and he saw that and he said it's right in the way of where we need to put these beams. And really, it's the only place we can put these beams. So that needs to compress and become not as long. So they, they are gonna reframe that and make it a little bit smaller. Actually, I think we're gonna do it. We gotta get some uh, two by 12s to do that. We don't have them today. So what we're gonna do, we'll pick that back up tomorrow, uh, but we're just gonna keep going with our vapor barrier here and we'll compress that um, tomorrow and patch it up with uh, sheathing and we'll also patch it up with our house wrap. But these kind of things happen and you just gotta kind of solve the problems when they come to you. So at this point, we have our ceiling sealed off with our barrier up there. We have a couple loose ends over here on this side that we have to tape off and also taping around most of these outlets. And this thing is sealed off and ready to go. Then we can start installing our finished boards and that will actually be the next video. So this video is just an introduction to the kind of prep work it takes to execute one of these installs. But up to this point, if you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. And better yet, I'll leave a direct link to the Windsor One installation information website where they go into thorough detail on how to get a good exterior trim install and really more than I can show you in one of these videos. But there you go, that's kind of step one to one of these installs. And step two is the fun part where we get to see this whole ceiling transform this space. But other than that guys, we're gonna wrap it up here. We got a little bit of framing rework to do on those like I mentioned earlier, those openings. We're gonna go ahead and knock that out and then patch that up and we'll be ready to start installing tomorrow. So we'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.